So I'm here with Glenn Kaiser, interviewing him about his new record, Swamp Gas Messiahs. And um, Glenn, it's been four years since your last album. Can you tell us a little bit about what life's been like for you? Well, Tammy, it's been COVID-19, uh, quarantine, uh, a lot more time with family. Um, over four years, uh, up until the virus kicked in, uh, a lot of touring, uh, mm -hmm. some 70 shows a year, mostly solo, some with GKB, uh, a lot of blues stuff, um, Sturgis, uh, a lot of jail and prison gigs. Uh, they always let me go home, which is nice. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and a lot of online work, mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of writing, blogging, uh, social media, uh, some teaching, mm -hmm. and a whole lot of interaction with people online. And you have with you, it's a diddly bow, is that what that's called? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you show us uh, yeah. how you play that thing? Yeah, well, you know, it's... Diddly bow is a one stringer, and it relates very much to... Uh, poor blacks in the South, uh, and then poor whites eventually m made guitarists out of whatever they could uh, with whatever they had laying around. And yeah, I, I make them and play them all the time. It, I began doing it some years ago um, to challenge myself to go deeper because mm -hmm. I'm a blues musician at core. Um, so I knew about them, but I had never built any. And then I began and it's uh, it's been a blast. And I've got a bunch of video clips online of different ones that I built. So yeah. Ended up playing a uh, couple of them on, on Swamp Gas Messiahs on the album. I find it interesting that this new album, Swamp Gas Messiahs, comes out after four years of our current presidency. Does that have any significance? Sure, of course. I mean, anybody that's elected uh, president of the United States is going to affect literally billions of people and mm -hmm. policies uh, or policy changes. So, yeah, all of that enters in. Um, <laughs> There's issue after issue being raised in the lyrics on this entire album, and they very much relate. Sure. You've always been gifted with um, being able to find the right musical style to match your message and your lyrics. Um, this record has elements of bluegrass, folk rock, and um, gospel blues. And what is the importance of using those specific styles? <laughs> well... Well, as a pastor, as an evangelist, I care a lot about music, um, worship leader as well. Uh, I'm at, at core a blues guy. I grew up doing soul and R&B and blues music. Um, for something like three and a half years, I didn't listen to any white music. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so all of that enters in. But when we're talking about protest records, when you talk Woody Guthrie, you're talking more of a folk bluegrass style. And all those guys back in the day, Paxson and, and Oaks and... Um, even now and then, Dave Van Ronk and, and others, uh, Joan Baez, they were, they were using acoustic instruments, sometimes mandolins, banjos, you know, Pete Seeger, so on. So I grew up hearing that as well as full-on rock music. And I ended up, when I moved, morphed out of uh, rock music as a player, I actually went from soul, R&B, blues and all that into rock. When I morphed back, mm -hmm. um, it was it was folk time uh, for a short time. And I find myself doing a lot of solo gigs these days. And mm -hmm. with these little guys, sometimes they have pickups on them, sometimes they don't. So protest songs in the 60s were almost all way more acoustic mm -hmm guitars, mandolin, banjo oriented stuff. So I just, it fit. It seemed to work with the lyric uh, uh, concepts of these songs. So you live in Chicago, which has had its own issues with gun violence, protesting and looting. And you live in Uptown, a neighborhood historically known for its violence and poverty, which you mentioned in the song, I Hear Talk. How has your experience contributed to the making of Swamp Gas Messiahs? Yeah. I grew up in the country. I grew up in farm country among hardworking German immigrant people. Mm -hmm. Ended up in a middle class, working sub class suburb. Had a couple of friends, a drummer in a band I was in. His old man was vice president of, I think, the second largest corporation in Milwaukee at the time. I've seen all of it. Mm -hmm. Ended up moving into the inner city of Milwaukee with my girlfriend, Black Ghetto. All of that conspires to help me to think through. My best friend, uh, Mama, was full-blooded Hawaiian. He was pretty dark in the summer, especially out in the sun. And I saw how people treated him and how they treated me. Mm -hmm. 
the cultural variations of dealing with people of color largely happen in the inner city, mm -hmm. uh, Chicago and elsewhere. Now, I'm a gun owner. Uh, I hunt. I shoot. I completely disagree with the NRA on a pile of issues. Couldn't even begin to tell you how many. So the issue of violence, you can do it with an army. You can do it through the police departments, mm -hmm. SWAT teams. You can do it through badged authorities. Mm -hmm. Uh, or you can be a black kid with a brick and a gang, or a gangbanger with a with a nine mil in the inner city. Drugs and prostitution are about commerce. Mm -hmm. There's a common denominator there. You know what it is? Money. Mm -hmm. And so the problem is, is when money and power and control is what it's all about. All have sinned and fallen short. <laughs> all. Mm -hmm. So I, I find myself often saying, "This is interesting." I'm out there with. Bikers, many times Christian bikers in the countryside, talking about the horrors of the inner city. Mm -hmm. They do, and I'll say, "How about the opioid crisis? How many homicides? You know, any of you guys ever been in prison or jail? Mm -hmm. You know anybody that's been shot and killed over drug deals recently in the middle of nowhere? Mm -hmm. Come on, you know, let's not play games with this stuff. This war. And by the way, all, all those drug cartels coming up from Mexico, we're buying. That's why they're selling." Mm -hmm. The United States is buying what they're selling. Come on. It's, it's, it's commerce. It's capitalism. It's market. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, to me, thinking through why people are in poverty, understanding how they got there, and then trying to blow off what we did to Native Americans and the issue of slavery and the way immigrant population after immigrant population got treated right. when they came to this country. And now you, well, you know, hey, that was then. This is now. Mm -hmm. Really? Do you believe in systemic institutional problems? Of course you do. Remember, it's a swamp. It's a swamp. Mm -hmm. Well, that means that there are institutional people in the institution of the swamp who are creating laws and policy that run things. That's how we got there. That's how we get there in Chicago. We've been, see, we, we put our crooks who used to be in, in, in politics, we put them in jail and in prison in Illinois. Mm -hmm. I'd like a few more states and a few more federal people to find out what that's about, too, <laughs> instead of playing the game with pardon. You want, you want pardon? Really. Come to Jesus. Find pardon. But deal honestly with the criminality that happens at every level. Um, I wish we had time to go through the richness of every one of your songs on this album. Um, and you've never been shy about tackling issues head on like apartheid, racism, poverty, systemic oppression, abortion. Um, can you share with us some of the subject matter you cover on the album and why it's necessary to talk and sing about it? The failure of, uh, of, of trashing the oil, you know, the, the environment mm -hmm. through oil, big oil and so on. Um, issues of immigration and the horrors that immigrants are going through. Mm -hmm. Those are mentioned. Uh, the, the failure of coal, back to the environmental issue, mm -hmm. uh, and people dying of black lung disease gets mentioned. Market Value, which is a song about dealing with slavery and continued ongoing systemic racism uh, in this country today, right now, right now, um, on and on and on, uh, dealing with decimating Native American tribes in several of the songs. Uh, the, the, the failure, really the failure of us living up to what we say we are and uh, as Americans, yeah. the plaque at the base of the Statue of Liberty which is, by the way, literally known as, called from day one, the mother of exiles. Mm -hmm. We don't want the tired, the poor. Get out of here. Go back to where you came from. Those are issues that I deal with and a lot more. In the song Working Poor, you wrote, Hey, hey, ho, ho, activist. No suits hanging like a passive fist. Mo sit on the couch and just complain. Dance between drops in the soak and rain. Um, so if one of these armchair activists came up to you, and ask like what they could do to make an actual change, what would you have to say to them? Well, first off, you get to know people. I mean, absolutely. And get to know people that you're afraid of. Don't talk to me about courage mm -hmm. when you don't want to get anywhere near somebody mm -hmm. or that kind of person or that group of people, those people. When I go into Cook County Jail, when I go into the prisons in Illinois or Ohio or Alaska or wherever I am in the world, I try to get as close physically to people as I can. I mean, obviously in COVID time, we can't even get in the door. Right. So now I'm sending DVDs. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the point is, is trying to get close. 
Wilson Avenue, I sit out many nights with a, a guitar or a harmonica and a little amp on a chair, and I scratch the neighbor's dogs mm -hmm. and talk to them and interact. Where are they from? How did they get there? What happened? And it's really building bridges, not walls. It's building relationships. Mm -hmm. It's it's understanding that people are who they are, and they got where they are, wherever that is, whether you like it or not, agree or disagree with it, mm -hmm. for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I think it's building those relationships. And it's asking questions, doing the homework, studying, getting to really know people. Um, we're in a day when, uh-uh. You know, I watch my favorite news channel and decide everybody else is an idiot, everything else is fake. Thank you very much. I'm done. Mm -hmm. you, you haven't even started. Jesus calls out to us. He links with us. He doesn't run the other way. He doesn't build a wall between us. He's trying to tear them down. Thank you for your continuing clarion call to biblical justice and for exposing the underbelly of our collective privilege. Um, Tammy, my, my call. It's not always my pleasure, but it is my call. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for sharing your thoughts and convictions with us today. Um, I've enjoyed talking to you and wish you the best with Swamp Guest Messiahs. Bright as our skin, we burn the straw now.